Colonel Sanders getting after them ladies this morning. Good day, y'all, and welcome on back to the channel. Mm. We're doing some bass fishing today. By the way, before I forget, new hoodies are available at GoogleSquad.com. Use my promo code LFG, save 10% at checkout. I gotta tell you what, I'm about to take this hoodie off. I came out this morning thinking, oh yeah, my coffee's gonna be steamy, I'm gonna have that hoodie on, it's gonna be hoodie weather. It's hot. I think it's like 75 out here right now. And the reason I wanted to go bass fishing today, things are starting to change up in the lakes. I like that. Uh, it's not super cold. Otherwise, I'd probably be hunting this morning. It's just too hot to hunt. I don't want to be sitting up in a saddle, mosquitoes attacking me. I actually have not focused on bass in a little while. I've been filling the freezer. I've been focusing on, on hunting. So I love me a good bass challenge. We're going to head out to a local lake and see how the conditions have changed a little bit and see how we can adapt and catch some fish with some fall tactics. Just take a look at this dookie right here, y'all. Wow. Think a daggum turkey roosted up there. Took a big old dumpster on my truck last night. You know, this, this really is one of the best times to get out on the water. Uh, a lot of people are not fishing, they're hunting. So there's that aspect of it, there's less pressure. And it's the transition time, so they've been out in deep water in the summer, for the most part. You, get, you always got fish that are shallow, that'll kind of stay individually, those lone wolves. But in the fall, they'll, they'll start to transition back to the creeks. And that's what we gotta figure out, what are they doing? Water temperatures, it's coming up, you know, it's 68, coming up to 69 right now, probably end up being low 70s. I'm going to start off looking at points, throwing topwaters and crankbaits. Shad are pretty scattered out throughout the water column. It's a great time to look for birds that are diving on shad. You see that? Get over there, get your topwater, get your, get your crankbaits, get your shad looking things out. It'd be a crime to not start out with a top water. So we're going to tie on two step. It's a top water walking bait. This has some draw power. This is definitely something I would leave tied on all day. The focus is shad. Shad are very oily helps them build up some fat for the winter and they just start to hone in on those things I mean look look at the shad ball that's just sitting there in like 12 foot There's one. <clears throat> what do we got here? Spotted bass. Very, very big fall schoolers right there. The old spotted bass. A little steady walking over a point. <clears throat> Looks like that water temperature is gonna land right around 70 degrees. There's another one. Oh, that's a better one there. Right on the point. I mean, he did not explode on it, but it's a better fish. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Take it easy with his braid right here. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Got them on that reaction glass. So this thing's a good shock absorber with the braid. Yeah, we'll get down here. Get down here in the seat. Barely hooked. Not sure if I can land this guy, if I sling him. We're just gonna back land him. There we go, guys, that's a toad. That's a toad, largey. Kind of had him hooked under the chin right there. That is a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Oh, look at that. He's blind in one eye. And he's got one little spot right there. So cool. See my dude? Enjoyed it. Woof. That is what we came here for, guys. That is, that seriously just made the day. That's exactly what I wanted to hope have happen right there. A little spotted bass and then boom four pound largemouth click clack click clack click clack this is a really easy top water to walk all right what i'm gonna do now i got my couple top water bites got the fill what i'm gonna do i'll definitely keep this tied on this is like an all day thing i want to keep i'm gonna go out to this little ridge here i'm gonna throw a jerk bait And I'm also gonna switch up. I'm gonna throw a crankbait as well. Might drag a worm, it's a little early. But just from what I saw, the way the bait was positioned up on this ridge, it looks like the fish are kind of, they're pushing them up there. Out here, they're kind of all scattered. The bass needs something to position on and points in the fall are just paramount, paramount paramount can't say that enough points 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 whether it's main lake going into creeks points are always valuable in the fall and if you're seeing the top water kind of fade off you're still seeing little splashes i don't think that was a bass but if they won't fully commit to coming up for top water jerkbait always a great alternative i just watched two little shad busters up there shallow there's one there we go oh he came off did not feel big but he was a fish so i'm going to pick that top water up again because i saw a top swirl saw a shad get busted way up there if you're seeing that even if it's noon Pick up that top water. Don't be scared. Oh, golly. That one just, he just missed it. Oh, I actually wasn't even looking at my bait. <laughs> Which is usually a good thing. Okay, you know what? I'm going to throw on a new color crankbait right here. This is one of our new ones for the summer and fall in the in the banger. Just a simple little square bill like that. Alright, yep, we're touching bottom there. Oh, there's one right there. Oh my gosh, it came off. That one felt good too felt very good that was a good thump he thumped it like a jig i lost him hit a rock and then it just dunk. and we are home
I think that was some line or something. Crankbaits typically don't run that well with uh, 10 feet of line attached to them. Just a little amateur tip of the day. So if you're feeling that crankbait really dig in the bottom, you feel a good thud, just stop for a second. Just let it float back. It would give a fish an opportunity. They're hearing that constant dun, 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 banging on the rocks. And they're interested, they may be following it, they may hear it coming. And if you just pause it, it'll help you from getting hung, but it'll also help you get bites. So we got a 10 pound line, then we got our, our glass hybrid rod in that black series. Fantastic cranker, so I can get some distance on this thing. Sometimes I like to go with that jam knot. S Double San Diego jam or Eugene, Eugene bend on uh, lighter line, like eight to 10 pound. But those jam knots, they really hold up the brake strength right at the uh, at the connection. And uh, it'll just give you a little more leeway. You can fish it a little bit longer for having to retie. So I'm gonna throw this uh, recon. I'm gonna crank that a little bit. Let's start a little milk run journey, shall we? Take some moon baits and we're gonna hit banks. We're banking it. I'm going to look for points with shad. Similar type scenarios. Hell, I might even go fish the dam. It's usually a good fall cranking spot. It's like as soon as I came around the point, I stopped seeing shad. Now, if I go out into deeper water, I'm going to see them, but I want to see them up shallow. That means they're getting pinned and fed on. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, yeah, there's a fish right there. That feels weird. Oh, it was a smallmouth. That's why. Daggum weirdos weirdos I, I think i was actually hung for a second and then it uh as soon as i came off the fish grabbed it a little small mouth that would have uh actually completed the species run i think i got i think i got something else that's a stick tree pounder trickery that would have completed the the trio i don't know if i've ever done that out here maybe i have Catch a spot, a large mouth, and a small mouth the same day. Not vibing, we're gonna move. Man, we've lost some fish today. Keep pulling off. Just gonna have to throw me a little jig on that little wall there. Just looks too good. Line, that sucker, gee whiz. Come off, Dad! Gum it, man. Oh God, I've lost so many fish like that today. Right there on the point, I hooked him. Felt like four head shakes, and then just pulled off. Aha! Launching it with this rod. Better 
there's a fish. That's something huge. This is a giant. What is this? Oh my gosh, this is something gigantic. This is something huge. It's just wait. There's no way this could be a bass. Oh my gosh, guys. This is a giant. If this is a bass, it's going to be an absolute megalodon. Oh my goodness. It feels like I have the earth. It's got to be a giant catfish or something. What do we have here, guys? Oh my, yeah, it's wanting to stay on the bottom. I didn't feel a thump, so I could have snagged something, but I don't know. This is a giant, whatever it is. I can't, I can't even get it up. What do we have? I feel like we're about to see it. Nope, 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 nope. There it goes. This is either a 12 pound bass or it is something with whiskers giant drum this is the fabulous thing about fishing you just never know every time I gain on it it just goes back down oh my gosh big flathead good sized flathead this thing is this thing is going in the box for me wow Big flathead. And he's hooked right on the outside of the face. Wow, that's a good one. That is a good one there, guys. I'm gonna try to clasp him in the mouth. Oh, wow. Look at that beast right there. All the crankbait just fell out. Oh my goodness. That is a PB crankbait for, that is a PB flathead out here for me. They get a lot bigger than that, but let's just, let's get a weight on this guy. Eight. 8.8. Oh my goodness. That is a delicious eater right there. Y'all just take a look at that hammer. What a pretty fish. Now some people call these Appaloosas because of the color, but you know, they're flathead catfish and you can see why got that big flat head and they just sit on the bottom like a rock and they're active feeders so they will hit crankbaits they will hit bass lures and I'll catch them every once in a while on bass lures I actually catch more of these on bass lures than I do when I'm jug lining so uh, just incredible we are going to slap the sides off of that baby stay tuned for that man cannot wait cannot wait to put that thing with some spices a little bit of rice Woo, son. That's gonna feed the family for a couple meals. The silver bullet and I, we threw in the towel, guys. After that catfish, 
no bites. Nothing was happening. But I actually got the amount of bites that I wanted to uh, today. The two I actually landed were on top water, and then I got bites on jerk baits and crank baits, and they were just pulling off, pulling off. Perfect day to crank. I felt good about it, and I, and I had the bites that I wanted to, but we did not put together a big sack. By the way, if you guys want to get any of the baits, any of the new gear, LFG, use the code at guggensquad.com. LFG, save 10% on, on anything. So if you want to get loaded up on fall baits, um, you can use my promo code anytime and save on the site. What I'm really excited about right now is I just got home. My kids are just at an age where whenever I come home and I have fish, they get so excited. So I'm gonna go grab them and I want them to see this catfish. I want Stephanie to see it too, because we're gonna be eating this thing. But it's just so, it's so big, they're gonna freak out. So I'm gonna go get them. Oh, Amy's getting in the cooler already. What do you think about this thing, guys? <laughs> Isn't that wild? Look at my ice. Ice, yeah, there's ice in the Don't. Don't eat it. He's like, I kind of want to touch it. Do you what do you think about that, it? buddy? You want to touch it? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> it almost fell twice. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> yep, this is what people go noodling for right here. Look at its little whiskers. Yep, they have a big flat head and they sit on the bottom and they wait for things to come by and they boom. They grab them. Catfish gonna be tasty, y'all. Cannot wait for that. Leaves falling. 3D targets out here. We did. We doing. We doing flinging just about every day. Stay in tuned. Speaking of harvesting, it is a lot quieter in here. You may notice. Where are the roosters? Where are they? Chicken check. Colonel Sanders, the only survival survivor of the harvest that took place i just ha i had way too many roosters in here here y'all and uh, i had a nice cool day last week and i just said wah bam we're doing this and i harvested all the roosters vacuum sealed them already had one not the best pretty tough did it in a in the pressure cooker then put it in a stew it was all right it was all right but it was not it was not the best so now we just got Colonel Sanders with the seven hens, and I'm waiting on these two new girls to start laying. Production has turned down. They're going into kind of their fall mode, but should be any week now. We should start getting some out of our, our new hens. So, girls, may you pass a, a good egg for me, please. Fish and Freaks, thanks for hanging with me today on this on-the-water experience. It is go time now. I, you know, I told myself last couple years, like I wasn't going to fish September for bass until, you know, basically like mid, mid October, mid to late October, bass fishing, ticking up, bite getting better. We got white tails on the move. I'm ready to do both. So subscribe to the channel to see it all right here. And thanks for being with me. Smash that like button. And I will see you guys on another outdoor adventure here on the channel.